Thank you, Barry. Thank you, thank you, Barry. And it, it's wonderful to have all of you and have you here uh, in Minnesota. It is uh, an interesting conversation that we're having at a very uh, important time. Because I can tell you that when I entered the United States Congress, there weren't too many people talking about antitrust other than Elizabeth Warren. But you were, and Lena Khan was, and you all were uh, making this issue the issue. I heard about the work that you were doing, and we came together and you, we started a congressional antitrust caucus, and you spoke at some of the first meetings that we had, and we had a series of conversations that included uh, uh, agricultural concentration, uh, how monopoly affects black and brown communities, uh, which is a very important part of this conversation. Uh, if you think that uh, small businesses get pushed out uh, by the big dogs as they consolidate, think about uh, minority-owned firms. Uh, you know, the, you, you can barely buy uh, hairspray made by a black manufacturer now. Um, I mean, this is affecting the entire uh, economy and impacting everyone, and it is uh, your effort, I believe, that has helped driven this issue to be what I believe is the, the, the number one issue. Uh, and when people ask about what's the main issue, they might not say antitrust, but they're kind of gonna, but what they're gonna say probably has something to do with antitrust. If they said inflation, I'm worried about inflation, well, they probably uh, are being impacted by a bunch of uh, CEOs on earnings calls boasting about how they're tacking on a little premium to their profit margin, right? If you want to talk about climate, well, why can't we get more pro progress on climate? Because of highly concentrated markets. And I can tell you, our lawsuit against ExxonMobil, uh, you know, they, they buy back. You know, they actually um, had somebody introduce a bill to limit my office from uh, uh, bringing on uh, um, uh, fellows paid for by a foundation, right? And I got a feeling that they're up to some other stuff too. My, my, my point is that you, Barry, and others have made this issue of antitrust the key issue. I was at a meeting just the other day where I posed a question. I said, if, if, I could, if I could tell you that by working on one issue, we can stop wage stagnation, increase uh, small business development, increase uh, product differenti differentiation, preserve the family farm, uh, and lower consumer prices, uh, would, you wanna, would you wanna work on that one issue? And I was like, yeah, what is that? Well, that's uh, antitrust. <laughs> and so many of the things that impact people, when I'm knocking on doors, I'm an elected politician, I have to knock on doors and get, get votes. People, in one way or another, are talking about this issue, and it is high time that we paid special attention to it. Let me tell you, in my office, I got some folks who I want you to meet, I want you to meet could you guys stand up? Um, Elizabeth, is it Elizabeth Lee? Oh yeah, Elizabeth Odette, who's uh, leading, our, leading the band, Katie Morkey leading the band, uh, and then Zach Sates over there leading the band, got him from New York, very much, you guys can have a seat. And then um, uh, Keon Delsty, who is a law student, but who is, works in our outreach group, and he's doing a great job too. And we feel that our, this, I'm telling you that as, as long as I'm AG, we're gonna be trying to dedicate more resources to this group so that we can do more to help make sure that this economy is one where anybody can aspire to prosperity. That's what it's all about. I mean, my, my, what I tell folks is that we are in business to help people afford their lives. Is that what I, is that what I say? I mean, my staff is like, yeah, that's what you say. I say it all the time. But we can't afford our lives uh, if some giant uh, international uh, amalgamation is soaking up all the resources and all the democracy and all the this and all the that uh, at the expense of the average person. Uh, and so this movement, what I'm really talking about, uh, Barry, is that your leadership in a movement and all of our role in that movement. Uh, there has been a fairly large number of books written. Uh, many of you probably wrote, read them or wrote them. hope you read them. Uh, but uh, I, well, I was inspired by Barry's book, uh, Move Fast and Break Things. That, that was one of the first books on high-tech concentration. Zephyr Teachout, Professor Teachout, wrote a great book called Break Em Up. Uh, Amy Klobuchar wrote a great book on a monopoly and antitrust. 
And uh, so, so the, and I hope that we keep on generating articles and books and academic uh, research because this is all gonna help drive that movement. But I also am very excited about meetings like this one because we've got to break this conversation out of academia and out of the halls of Congress and get it into the community, get it into the community. And one of the folks that are really doing a great job at that uh, is uh, the Farmers Union in the state of Minnesota. The National Farmers Union has a, uh, has a campaign called Fairness for Farmers. Uh, and Stu uh, Laurie is here, stand up Stu. The guy in the big beard over there. <laughs> and uh, they have a raffle going on where they're trying to raffle off a, uh, a, tr a, a, a side by side uh, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, an agricultural vehicle that is multi-terrain in uh, its ability to navigate uh, the ground. And on the side of it is plastered Trust Buster. <laughs> right, and so if you buy a ticket, you might get the Trust Buster. But, um, but the Farmers Union has also uh, helped to sponsor an intern in, in my office who works on uh, antitrust because uh, you know, they're farmers, so they're trying to grow talent, right? And uh, did y'all get that one? Okay. So, so, uh, so we're real pleased to be working with them. But they are the, I believe, the vanguard of the popular movement to help people understand how market concentration is not good for all of us. And let me just say, you know, market concentration hurts, uh, hurt, uh, hurts and harms real people and their lives. Uh, you know, just in the area of agriculture, again, sticking with that theme, a few months ago, a farmer in Rice County, Minnesota, explained that uh, they only have two buyers when they are uh, putting their livestock up for auction. Uh, that's, that's pretty, that's too concentrated. Those buyers are in a position to just dictate terms. Uh, they're very, these farmers are very anxious and worried uh, that they will uh, show up and maybe only have one buyer or no buyers. Uh, and, uh, we'll, and we'll have to accept any price that is, that is uh, offered. Uh, the limited choice of who to sell to and the price at which to sell causes their earnings to plummet. Uh, and there in, in, in Minnesota, just to skip over to dairy for a moment, we've literally lost hundreds of dairy farms in Minnesota over the last few years. I'll never forget Sonny Purdue was over there in Wisconsin and said, hey, you know, when it comes to dairy farms, you've got to get big or get out which I believe is the absolute opposite of what the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act and all the uh, other laws require. It's not get big and get out, it's if you're too big, you can't exist. You know, do y'all remember too good to, too big to fail? How, how'd that work out for us? Not very good. But then we can move over to, to healthcare. You know, there was a recent study that found that over 75% of hospital markets are highly concentrated, meaning that one, well, only a few hospital systems dominate an entire local market, and right now uh, they're trying to concentrate again right here in our local community, uh, and we have some thoughts about that that we'll, we will be dealing with. And then not just, not just the hospitals, also pharmaceuticals. I mean, in the, we uh, actually have been pushing litigate, litigation in, in the area of insulin, and, I, and I'll tell you one thing that got me interested in, in this uh, is when before I was even in Congress, I was at a community meeting, not too different from this one, and a lady walks up to me and says, I gotta talk to you. And when that happens and you're a politician, you know that you better focus your attention on that person, right? And she said to me, her name was Nicole Holt, Smith Holt, and she said to me, uh, my son uh, turned 26, which most mothers would be happy about that, uh, but he, when he turned 26, he aged off the Affordable Care Act. So his insulin price went from a few bucks to about $1,300 a month. And as a result of that, he couldn't pay it, and he was too proud to ask me for it. So he started rationing his insulin. And he is a type 1 diabetic, and uh, his body went to, into ketoacidosis, and we lost him. And she said, I want to know what you're going to do about it. And I talked to her and I listened to her and I shared with her what I wanted to do about it, but the only good answer I could come up with that satisfied me is to put myself in a position to try to enforce antitrust laws. Because that is at the bottom of this outrageous pricing that we have uh, in the area of insulin. I mean, 
I mean, here's the reality. I mean, when, in, when they discovered insulin some 100 years ago, uh, the, the inventors um, or the discoverers sold it to University of Toronto for a dollar. It's not, it doesn't supposed to be out of the reach. Her son, Alex, he did not die from diabetes. He died because he couldn't afford insulin. He died because he couldn't afford his life. And that is what we are fighting to stop and to change. Let's talk about wages for a minute. One study found that the median compensation for American workers would be $10,000 higher if employers were less concentrated. Wow. Talk about housing crisis, food crisis, clothing crisis, people not being able to make it, can't afford health care. Come on, man. It's just, it's just taking from, and just putting yourself in a position to, to, to take from people. Another study found that a corporate consolidation costs American households $5,000 a year in purchasing power. There's a consensus around the studies, and uh, this is something I think wage earning people want to know. But they don't know, and that's part of our job is to make sure they learn. And let me also move on to the subject of democracy, an important, critical topic. In fact, the defining feature of our country, you might say. And democracy cannot exist where monopolies thrive. In fact, fighting monopolies means fighting for our democracy. Uh, as Louis Brandeis famously said, and I know you all know the quote, but I'm going to say it anyway. We may have democracy, or we may have wealth concentrated in a few hands, but we can't have both. If we have anything today, we have wealth concentrated in a few hands. And there's no, there shouldn't be any surprise to any of us that, that, that some people um, you know, uh, feel that the days of uh, representative democracy in America have come to an end. In fact, they fought to try to stop the peaceful transfer of power. I am telling you, these political uh, divisions, pol these polarization, much of it can be found in these highly concentrated markets and how they, these problems manifest politically. I can assure you that if you are a member of Congress, um, nobody is going to try to bribe you. They don't have to. They ha all they have to say is, oh, Congressman, have we ever done an event for you? And you know what they mean. They're going to get their friends together and throw you some pack checks, and that's going to help you get reelected. And if you start squawking in the wrong direction, they don't, they just ignore you. I mean, the great Paul Wellstone famously said this about one monopolistic industry. He said, when it comes to big tobacco, I don't take any money from big tobacco. I don't take any money from big tobacco. Of course, they don't offer me any either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's the way Congress works. If you don't sing their song, they can ignore you because there's plenty others who will. Very important to keep that in mind. And. Uh, you know, so I just do it on, on this issue of, of what do we do, you know, we need to operate on multiple levels. We need to have a grassroots community engagement. Miss McGillicuddy must understand what concentrated markets mean to her. And we've got to think about how to build that. We've also got to work legislatively, and we've got some good progress going on on that. I'll talk about that in a minute. We've got to work in litigation. We've got to sue some folks. And we've got to change the way lawsuits are constructed. It's too expensive. Quite honestly, whenever we're going to take on a big case, and my staff knows this is true, we, we're, going to, we're, going to, we, uh, get, we're going to get ready for the sticker shock in the area of cost shares. So like, oh, you want to sue this big dog, that big dog? Drop 50 grand on the table to get started because that's our share of the litigation and the experts. That makes it very difficult to hold them accountable. We need to change the law to make it easier and make, put the burden on them. So we need grassroots action, we need litigation, we need legislation, we need administrative changes, uh, we need academic thought and development on what we do, how we deal with the modern realities and how the modern realities are related to the old realities. We need all these things. And if we do these things and we stick to it and don't get pushed aside, We'll get, we're going to have a better economy. We're going to have a better world. We have a more democratic world. We're going to have a cleaner, greener world. We're going to have a world that's more just and more equitable. But let me just talk about some of the possible legislative solutions. Uh, uh, but you know, uh, there are limitations. These, I want to talk a little bit about federal bills. 
Uh, there are some strong bills proposed in Congress. I'm sure you probably have already talked about them today, uh, but uh, none uh, have yet to make it over the finish line yet. Uh, it's going to need to take all of our effort to get them there. Uh, on, uh, on the state enforce, uh, one of them is the State Enforcement Venue Act. Now, this is very important. It gives state AG offices the ability to control the venue uh, that they bring their antitrust cases in. Actually, these days, if anybody gave me a choice between state court and federal court, that's a no-brainer. Where, where do we go, Elizabeth? State court. <laughs> we, we don't want to be dragged over there. Uh, but it would be nice if we would have that choice. Uh, the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission already have this ability under federal law, and states are looking for the same protection. Minnesota laws, uh, right now, and we're working on and have worked with legislators who are eager to work with us on this. Uh, about cleaning up and updating uh, our state antitrust laws, bringing them into conformity with the federal Robinson-Packman Act, and uh, passing abuse of dominance uh, additions uh, uh, to our, our legislative uh, package. Um, we're also interested in this issue of right to repair. Uh, we've heard from Minnesotans that if the device I own is broken, shouldn't I uh, get to decide how my device is repaired? Seems like a simple request, wouldn't you say, Stu? Uh, but you start messing around with that tractor, you're going to lose your warranty and get into a whole bunch of other problems. I mean, the bottom line is it's not just agriculture. It's phones. It's all kinds of things. And I remember when I was a kid, there were repair shops. When's the last time you saw a repair shop? Well, this is because of this kind of development. And so um, developments in the area of uh, right to repair, uh, you know, uh, you know, there was a complaint filed with the FTC against John Deere in March. Uh, it alleges unfair methods of competition, uh, such as agreements of restraint of trade and monopolization, and unfair deceptive trade practices. In March, also, we supported legislation proposed in the Minnesota State Legislature for, uh, for the second session in a row uh, on digital fair repair. Uh, and so we are working on this issue as well. And I mentioned rulemaking. Uh, you know, we have been active and we've co coalesced with AGs, and I want to say to the folks in this room, I'm not the only J AG who cares about this issue. Phil Weiser really cares about this issue. Tom Miller cares about this issue. Uh, and there are a number of Republican AGs who have expressed interest in this issue, uh, from PBMs to uh, a, a number of things. So this is space for us to work together on something, and I think we should uh, definitely make that effort. Um, I'm speaking from the perspective of a Democrat, but I can assure you that I'll work with anybody who wants to ha make this economy fair uh, for, all, for, uh, for working people and, and regular folks. Um, but the rule, rule making, we've uh, con offered comments and, and, the air and helped to develop better rules in the area of the Packers and the Stockyards Act. We've urged the Department of Justice to investigate price fixing in the cattle industry, and we helped work with 16 AGs asking the USDA to prove, uh, improve competition in the meat processing industry. Um, as you all go back to your various states, um, meet with your AGs, talk to them about your concerns, and then me and your AG can get together and work on some things together. Um, you know, uh, many hands makes light work. And I think this is a, an, an organizing challenge that we should all take on. So let me just um, wrap up. Uh, by just talking about state enforcers uh, and how state enforcers have a particular and important role to play. And Minnesota recently joined the Department of Justice and the New York AG. Uh, you've seen Tish in the news recently, right? Uh, and uh, we're suing to stop the United Health Group, uh, which is located here, by the way, uh, from acquiring uh, Change Healthcare. Uh, th in this case, is about control and use of individual medical and insurance data. Unfortunately, the court issued an order this week denying the challenge and allowing the merger to proceed. Uh, that's why we need to think about who's on our federal benches, uh, that we need a new era of antitrust jurisprudence. Uh, however, uh, only after litigation was imminent did the parties take certain actions to address certain issues that the government had identified as anti-competitive, and we're gonna continue to stick with this case uh, to get every bit of reform that we can. Uh, Suboxone just recently survived its summary judgment challenge and is headed to a trial alleging anti-competitive product hopping to illegally obtain exclusivity. And there are a number of active 
public multi-states in uh, various stages of litigation, including generic drugs, Facebook, uh, and three different Google cases. Uh, let me just wrap up by saying that this effort, um, it, it, won't, it won't bring, we won't go from where we are now to some nirvana overnight. But if we start now working on all the various fronts that I identified and you identify, I am promising you that, that in, in a few short years, this economy will have a new jolt of energy, exhilaration, we'll have a fairer economy, and we will have better politics. Uh, and, uh, but it's, but it's got it, we've got to identify it and we've got to stick to it, and I'm honored to work on it with all of you. Thank you.